All right then guys, in this video, I want to quickly show you how we could easily write control structures in Laravel since Blade provides a very convenient syntax for it. So I don't want to touch the index page, but let's go to the about page and let's work in there. Let's get rid of everything. All right. Every control structure in Laravel begins with the at sign, followed by the type of structure. So there are multiple and we will go over all of them. So we also need to end it by going down and say at end structure. So if we have a if statement, it's end if. If we have a for, it's end for and so on. Inside the section, we can write down normal HTML tags. So we could use h1s or h2s or even divs, anything that you want. It's also possible to include variables right here with the blade syntax. So the double curly braces and let's say variable name. Now, what I want to do is to start off with the if statement. Let's say that we have an at if parentheses and on the line below, you need to close it off with and if. Inside the parentheses, we could add a condition to see if something is true or not. So let's say that if five is less than 10. If that is true, print out a paragraph called five is lower than 10. At this moment, it is actually true because five is less than 10. So let's save it. Let's hop back to Chrome. Let's change the endpoint to forward slash about. And let me zoom in because five is indeed lower than 10. But what if 5 is greater than 10, which is not true. So let's save it. And as you can see, nothing has been printed out. In order to fix this, we could create something which is called an else if statement. So if the if statement is not true, check the else if. And for that, we need to go right below our paragraph. And let's say at else if, which has a condition, so parentheses. So let's say that if 5 is less than 10, print out a paragraph of five is indeed lower than 10. Let's save it. Let's hop to Chrome, refresh it. And five is indeed lower than 10 has been printed out. Now, if the if and else if are not true, we can print out any piece of text that we want with an else statement. But before I do that, let me show you what I mean. So let's say that if five is double equal to 10, save it, Google Chrome, nothing has been printed out. And for that, we could use an else statement. So if the if and else if are not true, we can print out another piece of text in the else statement. And it's the same process. Right below our else if, let's create an else, which do not have a condition because it will print it out if the if and else if are wrong. Let's say h2, all conditions are wrong. Let's save it. Let's go back to Google Chrome, refresh it, and all conditions are wrong has been printed out. There's also something pretty cool in Laravel that PHP does not have, and that's the unless directory. But before I show it to you, let's hop to our controller because we need a variable for it. So inside our pages controller, let's say in the about function that we have a variable name, let's set it equal to Dari. Well, let's change it to John. Let's say, with name and let's pass in variable name. All right, let's save it. Let's go back to the about page and let's create the unless directive. Since I've got Emmet installed, and I think I've said this before, we could write down unless, hit tab, and our syntax has been created. Now as a condition, let's say the function empty, we want to see if name is empty or not. And if it is, let's create an h2, which says name isn't empty. Let's save it. Let's hop back to Google Chrome. Well, right now you can see that the paragraph is printed out. So what's going on right here? Because name is not empty, right? Because we just have set it equal to John. Well, the unless directive is the opposite of the if statement. So in PHP, we would have have done something like this. We would have have said that if it's not empty, variable name, print out name isn't empty. Save it, refresh the browser, and this works as well. Let's get rid of the if statement. And I've actually touched a little bit on the empty function, how we used to do it in PHP, but Laravel comes with a pretty cool directive, which is the empty directive. So let's write down empty and hit tab. And this empty directive 
we'll check if a variable or input field is empty or not. So what do we want to check? Well, to see if name is empty or not. So if it is empty, let's say name is empty. Save it, hop back to Google Chrome, and well, it's gone because name is not empty. And if we had an explanation mark right in front of it, you can see that name is empty because it's the opposite. If we get rid of the explanation mark and change name to, let's say, second name, save it, hop back to Chrome, name is empty has been printed out because variable second name does not exist and therefore it's empty. And the last shortcut that I want to show you is the isSet directive, which is the same as the empty method in PHP. isSet is one that people use a lot. So let's write it down. Let's say isSet, hit tab. And this method does a check if a variable has been set or not. It returns true if it has been set and it returns false if it hasn't been set. So let's say variable name. Let's see if it has been set. If it is, let's say name has been set. Save it, check Chrome, and name has been set, has been printed out. Since Laravel 7, there is an option to create a switch statement. And it's mostly used to perform different actions based on different conditions. So before we continue on, let's remove everything inside the about.play.php and let's add a comment because I want to add some notes right here. All right. I recommend using a switch statement if you are comparing multiple possible conditions of an expression. So let's say comparing multiple possible conditions. And sorry, talking and typing is very difficult. You have multiple values that may require the same code. Or you have some values that will require essentially all of another's value execution. So let's create our switch statement. So let's go right outside of our comments. Let's write down switch, hit tab. You can see my switch directive. And inside the switch parentheses, we can add a condition that we want to check. Since we got our variable called name, let's just write that down. All right, what's next? Well, we have cases right here. And you basically can see one case as one if statement. It's just one check. So let's get rid of the one. Let's add single quotes and well, let's say Dari. You can also see that every case ends with a break directive. And this is mainly used to prevent the code from running into the next case automatically. So if our variable name is equal to Dari, we want to somehow stop it from running. And that's done with a break. So let's create an H2 in here because if variable name is equal to Dari, let's say name is Dari. Case number two. Let's say if it's equal to John, print out name is John. And let's create a new case as well. So right after the break, let's create a new case to see if name is equal to, well, let's say Michael. If it is H2, name is Michael. Let's save it. Let's go back to Google Chrome and let's refresh it. And name is equal to John. Now, what if there is no case? What if we set John equal to David? So let's change the H2 to David as well. Let's save it. Let's go back to Chrome, refresh it, and we have nothing on the screen. In any case, even if you know that there is a match, I always recommend you to use the default directive that we have right here. The default directive will be executed if no constant expression value is equal to the value. So right below our default, let's create another H2 which says no match found. Let's save it. Let's go to Google Chrome, refresh it, and no match found has been printed out. 